Good morning, Muslims of the world and everybody that live on this planet Earth. My name is uh, Mamadou Jimo Adua Bello. I'm the first born of the Shehu Ibrahima Mekano Bello Adua, the chief imam of Al Jumani Central Mosque, number 51 Osodi Road. I came here last month from Kasina Gaura. I'm a Fulani by tribe. My mother is Yoruba from Osobo. I am the assistant chief imam of the Gaura Central Mosque. By the grace of Allah, I will become the next imam at the end of this Ramadan on the Salah day. Now this is my testimony and my encounter I have the Lord Jesus Christ. I never believed Jesus or Christians. I ever hate Christians because I have been taught from childhood that the Christians changed the Injilu, which means the gospel of Jesus Christ. If they live it the way it is, everybody would have been a Muslim. So for this purpose, I hate Christians. I don't kill them, but I have nothing to do with them. I used to buy Bibles some days. I will confess that today before the man of God and tear, tear them. I used to buy plenty and tear them. It used to pain me. Their mother used to pain me. But until strangely, on Monday, about 3.45 a.m., I have encounter with Jesus Christ. That was on the 20 task of the Islamic calendar, which in the uh, uh, white man calendar, or how do I say it, lunar calendar is 23 of the Ramadan, but the white man calendar is on the, by the grace of God, on the 29th, sorry, on the 25th, about 3.45 a.m., April 2019. I was praying, leading the people in the mosque. My uncle was present, and the two elders of the mosque, and then seven other mosque members. That is Al, I mean, Jumani Central Mosque in Osodi here, number 51, on the way going to the market. It's the biggest mosque there, just opposite, the one opposite the a church called Methodist Church. They are just opposite. I was reading the first chapter of our Quran, which is called Surat Al-Fatiha, meaning the opening chapter or the murder of the Quran. It's called the murder of the Quran because it summarizes the entire 6,626 verse. Muslims will bear me witness. They understand what I'm saying. When I get to verse 4 of the Quran, because our prayer is done in Arabic, when I call the Ikrat al Kram, that is the full calling for the prayer, the first calling for the prayer. When I say Allahu Akbar, I was reading the first chapter. When I get to verse 4, immediately I say, Iya kana buru wa iya kana ustayin idna sirat al mustaqim, sirat al lazina namta alayhim, ghairi al madubi alayhim wa Everybody say, Amin. That is the normal way of the prayer. All of a sudden, a light from nowhere appear. It fills the whole mosque. And it's better than the sun. I've never seen such a light, but it's not bringing heat, but it's better than the sun. It rather bring cold. I feel cold and peace instant. But the mosque don't have any AC. It was a farm, and they are not on. In the midst of that light, a man spoke to me out of the light. He asked me in Arabic, Lions runa illa tafadil islamina, one to muslimin. Which means, he said I should come out of them. He speaks to me in Arabic. I'm the one translated in English. But I know the reason why maybe he speaks to me in Arabic, because I understand Arabic than even the Fulani and the Hausa. I can teach Arab man the Arab. Those who are Muslims, they will understand by listening to my Arabic language. And the person told me that I should come out of the Islamic religion. I should come out of them. And I said, ah, who are you? But all I know is this. He said, no. I should come out of them. This is not the right path. He want to bring me to the faith that bring man and save the soul from the condemnation. And I said, no, that is Islam. I challenge the person. I told him Quran chapter 2, which is Surah Al-Baqarah, meaning the chapter of the cow. Verse 257 said that, in the Allah had al-Islam, meaning the only faith accepted by Allah in heaven is Islam. Then he said that it's a lie and a blaspheme. He said that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Ah, and I said, ah, that is not possible. You, you claim to be Anabi Isa, which means Jesus. If truly you are Jesus, Jesus cannot be the way and the truth and the life. Muhammad is the way. He said, no, that is the lie. I should listen to him. The time has come. He wants to save me and use me as a platform of glory to deliver my Muslim brothers from the darkness of Islam to the light of the gospel. And I say that is a lie. If really I Jesus, I insist I want to see him. I challenge him. He said that I am not even worthy or qualified to see him, not to talk of hearing his voice. I say, oh, but people saw you during your time, according to my Quran, chapter 19, verse 8, short with Mariama, the chapter that named after your mother. People saw you. Then he said, no, that time he was not glorified. Now he is glorified. I cannot see him. I'm not even worthy or qualified. And I say, oh, I am a righteous man. I fast every Monday and Thursday. I'm a Sunni Muslim. If you should know that, we are divided into 73 sects as Muslims. 
We have the Ahmadiyya Muslims. We have the Tijaniya Muslims. We have the Shia Muslims. We have the Wahhabiya, the Murutiya, the Qadiriya. Name them. I'm Ali Sunnah. So I tell them that I'm a righteous. We claim to the most righteous person among all these ones because we are from the tribe of the Saudi Arabia. He said, ah, that is nonsense. None of us is righteous. I say, oh, I'm righteous. I fast every Monday and Thursday. And every month, the 14th day, 15th day, and 16th day, I fast. I never fornicate. My house, the women cover every part of their body. Black, black. They do hijab. I've never fornicated. I remove 15,000 from my salary and I give to the miskin and their team, which is widow and orphanage. I'm a righteous man. Then he said that that is not righteousness. He said, but he saw the sincerity of my heart. And I'm zealous, but not according to knowledge. Then I said, oh, then you are not Jesus. If you are not Isa, if you are Jesus, you should not have knowledgeable. Why do I say that? The argument was based on my Quran. Quran chapter 19, Allah honor the mother of this Jesus. As a virtuous woman and a righteous woman, and named Quran chapter 19 after, which is called Surah al Mariama. And verse 38 of it said that Jesus had the ability to heal the sick and raise the dead, and open the eyes of the blind. He even took a clay and then mold it in the form of a dove, and he breathed into it, it became a live bed that fly away. That means Jesus gives life. So I insist that if truly really is Jesus and he claims that Jesus, then he should tell me what I used to tell the Almighty God. When I'm praying as a Muslim, every Muslim for that matter. Seven part of their body touches the ground. Their hands, the tip of their nose, the tip of their forehead, their knees, and their toe. Quran said there will be a witness for you or against you on the day of judgment. So I asked the person, there is a dua, which means a prayer. I used to tell the Almighty Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. I never voiced it. I said inside my heart. If truly you are Jesus, Quran says you have ability to know what is in my heart. Then tell me that thing I've been telling Allah. I was amazed. I was flabbergasted. The person told me all the things I've been telling the Almighty Allah for the past 10 years. And this is the same Quran saying in Quran chapter 4, verse 18, that only the Almighty Allah, or God, knows the secret things of men's heart. So Jesus was able to tell me what was inside my heart. Please, my Muslim brothers, if I want to be honest, should we now, we should disobey this Quran, or we should obey, since you want to obey Quran at all costs, even to the point of death. This is Quran chapter 4, short in Nisha, the chapter of the woman, verse 84 said that only God knows the secret things of men's hands. But this Jesus told me what I was telling Allah, which I have never voiced for the past 39 years. I say it always in my heart. He was able to tell me that. That is the quality of Almighty God. I am sorry. Uh, I want to believe Jesus is God. But I still have my doubts. I asked him, what did he want me to do? He said that, except I am born again. I cannot see the kingdom of God. And I said, that is nonsense. I am not stupid, if you don't know. I do my university in this neighbor country called Ghana, Accra. That is their first president, his university, Kwame Kuruma Science and Technology. I told the boys, I am well educated, both academically and Islamically. I spent 15 years in Qatar to study the Quran, what we call Hafiz al-Quran. That means the interpretation of the Quran and the memorization. The Quran is 6,626 verse. I memorized it from Nas to Bakara. The Muslims, you will understand what I mean from Nas to Bakara. For the Christians, it means from the beginning of the Quran to the end of the Quran, which in other words, the Christians fully, I don't know, from Genesis to Revelation. I have it in my head. I don't need to open it at the age of 15. So I told the voice, I'm well educated. He said that I'm only zealous, but I am not according to knowledge. He want to bring me to the true knowledge that saved the soul from condemnation. So I said, how do you mean? He said, I should find out from the Christians, the world born again. So I said, no, I've traveled. I've not seen a child gone back to his mother's womb, even a child born now now, so that is not possible, it's nonsense, he said no, it's not nonsense, I should listen to him, I should find out, but when my father asked the elders and uh, his uncle who were present in the mosque, did they actually saw a light, uh, they say well, they saw a light, they agree with that, but the problem is that, their problem is that they say they don't hear any voice, so that means this is a demon, it's a jinnah, which Muslims call demon, jinnah, that is trying to pollute my mind, because you know at the end of this, Ramadan Salah day, I'll be ordained as the chief imam of the Gaura Central Mall. So I should forget the thing. It's a disgrace. It's a shame. I said, I hear. We went to the uh, mosque yesterday. I was invited uh, by the grace of Jesus. I will not say the grace of Allah because I don't believe that anymore. I will tell you why. I came to this thing. Though it's testimony I'm saying, but now I'm talking based on my faith. <laughs> I came to the mosque to lead them for prayer. Uh, not far from a church. Uh, very strange. Uh, after the prayer, all right in the mosque again, not in this, not in that mosque, in the Azus mosque, which is just at the timber wood here. And the voice told me, no, I should go front. I said, oh, I'm going home. He said, no, I should just go straight. I said, I'm climbing up. So I come up, I don't see any church. I said, but there is no church here. He said, I should just go further. 
I'm seeing churches, signboard, but it's like nobody's there, they are closed. I go further, then all of a sudden I hear people uh, speaking some strange language, I don't understand. I was really, really confused. Then he said, no, my son, it's not strange language. Don't say anything, just enter there. Ask them that you want to become born again. I said, how? He said, they are my choosing people, but they don't know that. Because sometimes they are wondering, ah, are we in the right place, especially the congregation? He said the reason why their blessings are delayed and their miracles is not his servant, the head pastor. The problem is the church, the church member. I should tell the congregation that their servant is his choosing vessel. His servant is his choosing vessel for this generation. So the problem is them. They are too familiar with his servant. They become too familiar with him. I should tell them they are too used to him. I should tell them it's high time for them to come out of the familiarity and honor his word and his teaching. If they do, we will grant them the desires of their heart and their blessings which delay shall never delay anymore. Then he said, I should enter there. But when I came, I didn't bother to say all these things. I only came, I want to know born again. So, I, because these are looking nonsense to me for that time. So, I came and I met somebody. His servant told me and then I think he told somebody to come and see me. Uh, his name is God's time. He said, I should come out. So the man went to talk to me when I said, he was so excited. Then he said, okay, his servant has to sit at the corner somewhere and wait. Uh, let him round the, the prayer. They were praying. I was still hearing them talk. He started talking that nonsense. He was talking something nonsense. It's not Nigerian language because it's not Yoruba, it's not Hausa, it's not Fulani, um, I mean, it's not Calabar, it's not Igbo. So I was confused. Ah, what is wrong? What language are these people speaking? Are they not Nigerians? Inside my heart. So when he come out, uh, he tell me that no time. Let's just pray. Jesus has saved you. He will do his work. My Lord will do his work. I know he has saved you. He even saved a man in Saudi Arabia when he was on his sick bed having HIV. He said, Sheikh, and all of us Muslims know the meaning of Sheikh. Final order, the highest order in the Islamic reign. And Jesus saved him. And I've not got there yet, but I mean, next two years I'm about to attend to that position before Jesus appeared to me. So his servant prayed with me. His servant don't know me. But why did he tell me that Jesus has already done his work? So I was confused. What is this man talking? Not knowing that he's talking what Jesus is about to do because already know that Jesus already telling what he's about to do. So I went home. I was, I was convinced, but at the same time I was confused. I said that Jesus has already done. He will even do greater. So in his prayer, he prayed for me. I remember he made a statement that this Jesus is going to visit me. He will fill me with his spirit. So all there was nothing nonsense to me. So I said, well, I, I keep saying amen, amen. So I went home. But Jesus told me that the prayer of his servant never fall on the ground. Only the problem is that people are too familiar with him. That's why he's delaying. They should learn to honor him and stop looking at his outer appearance. He will change their destinies if they only can believe. So I went home. My father was very angry. While I was here, my father was even calling, calling, saying that where I am, the people in the mosque call him. I should forget church, whatever, and come back home. And he wants to know where I am. He will send the driver. But I cannot tell him. Uh, God time was my witness. He was there. So I said, no, I cannot tell you where I am. So I went home. And he was very angry at Lampapa here. He starts to forget everything of this. He don't want to hear it anymore. Nothing of Jesus in this house anymore. Unless I'll be digging my own grave. I say, Father, I haven't gotten to that. I hear you. I went to sleep. Around 1 o'clock, or 1.30, in this Ramadan, we are on the Khojra, which means that last 10 days of the Ramadan. All of us know that. According to the Hadith of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hadith Al-Qudus, Bukhari Muslim, Volume 22, it is stated that we are looking for only one particular day in the Ramadan. And it's not fun. You cannot say you wait until the last 10 days and fast. Allah says you will not accept it. You cannot also say you wait until the 15th day and start fasting. You will not accept it. So he says start from the first day, which means you have to fast all the 30 days or the 29 days. But Allah says that one day is found on the last 10 days, before the 30 days. Which will wake up every night. Some wake up 12 o'clock, some 1, some 2.30, some 3, maximum 3, to pray to Allah. Allah says when it's accepted, it's like 85 years of worship. It's called Laylatul Qadri, which means the night of power which means Allah said that you are worshiping for 85 years. So he says, I want to see the passing. Uh, again, he said that, no, don't worry, my son. You don't need to see me again, but I will testify myself to your family. But they will still have in their heart. I said, ah, I don't understand. He said, don't worry. Well, I told my father, I cannot lead this prayer. That was 1.30. I'm not feeling well. Because when I want to go to the prayer, that voice told me that, no, my son, my servant has already led you to me. You cannot serve two masters. You will either please the other and despise the other. And I said, oh, but uh, Allah also says in Quran, I change the voice little again. I'm too used to the Quran. I told that, but Allah says in Quran chapter 2, verse 27 to 28, that if there is no God, the next God is your parents. 
Allah said, never even say to them, peace, neither to disobey them. So, uh, I'm sorry, I don't understand you. What kind of God are you? Why you don't want me to obey my parents? He said, because he is the true God of heaven and the earth. My parents, they don't even know me. My father only put that water inside my mother. He asked me, did my father know how he germinate or grow? I said, no. He said, yes. Through him, all things were made. Without him, Jesus. He said, nothing was made. I should listen to him. I should not go. So I told my father, I'm not feeling well because I cannot tell him that directly that voice has not come and pray. That one, he will cut my head. So I said, uh, I'm not feeling well. He said, what is worrying me? I said, my stomach ache. He gave me medicine. He come back the second part of prayer, which was 3, 15 a.m. This dawn. I said, I'm not feeling well. He said, okay, rest. Then he come this morning, 5.45 a.m. I should go and lead the Fajr prayer. All of us know the Fajr prayer. It is the most important prayer of the five lay prayers. It's the first prayer in the morning before any of the five lay prayers. Allah said that when it's accepted, the remaining four will be accepted. When it's not accepted, the remaining four will not be accepted. And Allah said that an hypocrite cannot pray that one also. And the last one which is done by 7.15 a.m. Allah said hypocrite cannot also pray that one as a Muslim. This is our belief system. So not to pray it, it means I'm a hypocrite. But I told my father, I am sorry. I can only do this and I'm not feeling well. He became very offended this time. He said that he is not a small boy. He wants me to know that the English man say, give me your, show me your friend and I'll tell you who you are. He give back to me. If I'm sick, he knows. If I'm not sick, he knows. He wants to tell me that I'm not sick. He knows when I'm sick last year. I used to lie down and still pray. I know a joke prayer because that is the instruction of Allah. If you are sick, you cannot pray. He say you cannot stand. Allah say lie down. You cannot lie down. Allah say sit down. You cannot sit down. Allah say people should still hold you. I'm making you do the actions of the prayer. No excuse for it. So I tell him, Papa, I'm not feeling. I want to say to my Muslim brothers, let's ask ourselves before I continue. Don't you think this is bondage? It's like it's bondage based on what I'm hearing from Jesus. If you are sick, the God of heaven, according to Quran, Allah says, Inna Allah kana kafuru rahima, Quran chapter 10 verse 4. Allah says again, Bismillahi Rahman Rahim. He said that in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. If truly that verse is real, it's merciful. Why if you are sick, he still says you should pray? The real God of heaven should not be wicked like that. You are sick, he should understand you are not feeling well. This God also tells us that in Quran chapter 8 verse 4, I'm saying this thing to prove to my brothers, I am not a madman, I am not stupid, or maybe some Christians somewhere have bribed me, or give me some money. Because of that will be going through all our minds. I know I was there before. This thing will go through our mind. No Christian or pastor from anywhere. All of you should know. That's why I mentioned my father's name. Ibrahima. All of you know him. Daniel Bello. The chief imam of Al-Jumani Central Mosque. All of you know him. He's a car dealer. He sells car. And he's also the president of the Sunni Muslims in West Africa. So I'm not a poor man. All of you should know that by now. I'm a chartered accountant. Now, the truth of the matter is that, you see, all of you know my father. And some of you know me. All of you know my desire is go to Aljana. And this Aljana, it looks like it cannot be found unless in this Jesus. I am sorry. Why am I saying this? Allah SWT says in Quran chapter 2 again, Surah al Baqarah, verse 285. Amana Rasulullah, Unzila ilayhi mi rabbi wa maminuna kulna amana billahi wa malaikati wa kutubi wa rasul ila nufariku bayna isa ibn wa reya wa antuma kanu ya'maluna wa allahu la yadil qama zalimin. Allah says all you believe among the Muslims, believe in all the books and all the prophets. That includes the Bible. So how all the day, all of a sudden, the same Allah will come and say, the Bible is corrupt. The Christians change it. While the same Allah told you, Quran chapter 2, verse 285, you should believe in all the books. That includes the Injilu, the good news. And Allah said that, believe also, I, Allah, have sent 124,000 prophets on the planet Earth. And this is the belief of every Muslim, that the Almighty Allah sent 124,000 prophets on the planet Earth. Allah said all of them have four sort of his glory, except Jesus Christ, the son of Mary. Fine, Allah did not say his son. It doesn't matter. He said the son of Mariama. But he said only him is without a sin. And now, Allah said that Muhammad will intercede for us on the day of judgment in the Hadith al-Qudus, volume 32 of Buhari. Now, how is that possible when Muhammad has a sin? Allah said in Surah al-Mariyama, verse 32, that, فَسَغْفِرُوا يَا مُحَمَّدْ إِنَّ لَكَ مُنَا فَفِرُوا رَحِيمًا Oh Muhammad, ask me of forgiveness. I will forgive your present sins and the future one. That means he has, but Allah forgive him. But this man, Jesus, according to our Quran, is without a sin. So I think the man without a sin is worthy to intercede for us on the day of judgment for God's mercy than any other person. If they give a new set, my brother, and an old set, I think you will take the new set, not an old set. All of you now are well educated in this our faith. My father sent me to Qatar to study from there to Saudi for one year. I am sorry. I am saying nothing but the truth because Allah told us in Quran chapter 10 verse 15. haq wala kana murram. Accept the truth even if they are going to cut off your head. 
Allah also say again, in al bad kan haka wa ta'an zakuka. Truth has come and falsehood by nature is bound to perish. I am sorry. This is the truth. I'm not saying this to please anybody. I'm not pleasing any Christians, neither any Muslims. I want to please my Lord Jesus Christ who has visited me on Monday, who have saved my soul from the condemnation of the hellfire. I appreciate him. I'm so grateful for him saving me. And this morning, as the story continued, my brothers, I was put inside the room because the old man was angry. What happened was that this morning, when he persists, I have to go to the mosque, I said no. He said, well, he's going to take his bath. That is about 4.45 a.m. By the time he finished, he wants to see me in the mosque or order, he will order Baba and the two macho boys to drag me to the mosque. I said, Papa, it hasn't gotten to that. I hear you. He left. I was worried. I was really worried. Then the next 30 minutes, all of a sudden, that voice told me, my son, stand up from the bed. I said, I don't understand. He starts to stand up from the bed. I stand up from the bed. Then the voice said, I should stay after him, just like I've said after his servant yesterday, who prayed for me, who led me to him. I said, I don't understand. He said, there is power in confession. I said, I don't still understand you. He said, yes, my son. My servant don't want to take your time because he don't want to offend your father. He's a man of honor who respects parenthood. But he would have told you that my word said that with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I said, I don't understand. He said, yes. What you say yesterday, you are saved through my servant. It's not your works. I said, I don't understand. Just that word only that I'm saved. No. People who have to do right things, they fast, they pray, they give zadaka, they run away from fornication, they don't cheat, they don't steal, they don't do, they have to do all these good works to go to heaven. What do you mean? Just saying that I'm safe. He say, yes, my son, you don't need the good works. All you need is to confess me as your Lord and personal Savior. I take the sins and nail them on the cross of Calvary. That is why the Muslims get it all wrong. That's why your people get it all wrong. No one goes to heaven. Until he believed the finished work of Jesus Christ on this cross of Calvary. If not, forget it. Doesn't matter who you are. Whether you're a Muslim or a Buddha or a Hindu or whoever you are. This is the truth. The hard truth. I say, I don't understand. He say, yes. Now I should say after him, as many have received him, for them he give power to become the sons of God. Even them that believe on his name. I say, I don't understand. He said, I don't need to understand. I should just say after him. Just like I've said his, after his servant who lead me to him. And I say it, one, two, I stop. He said, no, my son, don't stop saying it. Keep saying it. I'll make it become part of your spirit. And I say, ah, how is that possible? He said, yes, in Islam, it's not possible. But in Christendom, in his kingdom, all things are possible to him that believe. I should only believe. So I keep saying it, as many as receive him, to them he give power to become the sons of God, even that believe in his name. When I'm getting to the seventh time, my brothers and sisters, I don't know, oh, has he up to now? I am the one this thing is happening, but I'm not know whether I'm going mad or I'm normal, to be honest. I saw something like a flame of fire all of a sudden. The ceiling, my room ceiling, opened up like this. My, I've never seen anything like that. And I saw something like flame of fire coming from the sky, coming right from heaven, all over my body. Flames, real fire. My whole body started burning. At the same time, it was strong like electric shock. I cannot control the I cannot stand the presence of it. The thing hit me on the floor. I started rolling. I started rolling. You are not there, but those who are with me, they can see my jalabia, some fat are dirty. I started rolling on the floor. As if somebody was controlling me. Somebody was forcing my mouth to speak. The words started coming. I don't know their meaning. I cannot stop the words. Ma sata la baya de lebo. Li ketososke zabranda la bruski. Ma kabara haya libo sata la bradeski. Yanosko sofian de lebo. Ma kabara yan de lebo. I kotoske zabranda. Adroske branda. Ma katodoski. La barabo. Akabadoske zabranda. Li kotoso. Ma sata la bahaya. Lebrodo alo kabroske zabrande. Libodoske zabranda. La mandoroske zabranda. Yanosko sofian talabrade. I kotobo sata la baya de lebo. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This thing keeps coming. I cannot stop it. I feel I continue, but I need to continue with my testimony. He said that, no, I should not stop. So my father thought I'm going mad. My mother became crying. My sister, everybody were crying because they say I'm going mad. My father quickly ran out to go to a place called Yaba at the Yaba Psychiatric Hospital to bring a man called Dr. Joseph. When the man comes, he starts saying he's amazed, he's amazed. So my father became angry on him. I brought you here to check my son. You are happy rather my son is mad. The doctor said, no, Imam. I am happy, yes, but not necessarily because I'm happy because your son is smart. I am happy because you have been my friend for some time. Last year I talked to you about this Jesus. I give you Bible, you throw it on my face. You even warned me never to try that again. So since then I've been praying for your family. I know that only Jesus can do it. Why I'm laughing is because Jesus has done it. And Jesus has saved your family. My father asked, what nonsense are you saying, Dr. Joseph? He said, oh, Imam, your son is chosen by Jesus. This is the Holy Ghost. My father asked, I can see you are also going mad like my son. Because I understand my father. 
because according to his view, that is Quran chapter 14, verse 8. The Almighty Allah said that, I mean, Muhammad, Rabbil Alamin, Hudajah, Sujada, Muhammad is their leader and he is the Holy Spirit. That's what the Quran says, Muhammad is the Holy Spirit. So, because of that, my father has said that, Holy Spirit cannot teach my son that Jesus is the Son of God. Because Muhammad is the Holy Spirit and Muhammad say, God have no son. That's Quran chapter 112, verse 1 to 5. Allah said to Muhammad, tell them that I am Allah, the absolute, the eternal. I forgot none. No one has forgotten. No one helped me in my creation and there is no one like me. That is, ahad, Allah who summoned. Lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul lahu kufan ahad. That is the meaning of what I'm saying in the English version. That means Allah don't have a son. Neither does anybody help me in this creation. But then, to go, before I go further, Jesus told me that this verse contradicts itself in its Quran itself. I, I say, ah, the Quran have no contradiction. He said, I should open to the Quran chapter 2, I should open to verse 23, and I should compare to this verse of Quran chapter 112, verse 1 to 5, where Allah said that He is Allah, He have no father, no mother. He born nobody, nobody born Him, and no one helped in His creation. Then, if this, if this is true, what Allah said in Quran chapter 112, verse 1 to 5, then why did He say in Quran chapter 2, verse 23, Surah Bakara, the chapter of the cow? Why did Allah say, وَقَلَقَ رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتُ وَأَرْضِ مَا بَيْنَكُمَا إِلَّا فِي سِتَةٍ أَيَّامٍ ثُمَّ السَّرَى عَلَى الْأَرْضِ That we created the seven heavens and the seven earth. We have given them two lips and two eyes. We spread the sky for them like a canopy, without a pillar. Have they not considered this? Now the word used there is we create the heavens and the earth. Jesus told me that this confirms the blessed trinity. That means there are three facets in the creation. My brothers and sisters in Islam, you see, the Quran even confirms Jesus. Now, Jesus told me again to open the Quran. Chapter 8, verse 4. Allah said, وَقَلَمَتِ Isa Kudus. That Jesus Christ is the spoken word of God and the Spirit of God. Kalamati means the word of God. Ruhul Kudus means the Spirit of God. Jesus asked me, if I should separate your spirit from you, you'll be a dead man. It's the spirit that leaves the body and the soul. Then they say the man is dead. They become an empty container. You become useless until they throw into a place for a cemetery or a grave. Muslims will understand this part more than any Christian. Because us, they tie, tie you this white cloth and wear it with rope. Tie your legs and they just throw you in the 60 feet on the ground. Nothing like coffee. Our own is terrible. So for this purpose, why we have to be careful. How we need to follow Jesus Christ before it becomes too late. I am not insulting anybody, discriminating nobody. But I am saying the truth. My Muslim brothers, this is the Quran. See, Jesus is the spoken word of God, the spirit of God. All of you have the Quran. You can go and open your Quran and they read it. So you will understand what I am saying. When we are praying, Every Muslim knows this one. For this one, every Muslim knows it. Immediately, the Imam says, Allahu Akbar. That's the first. Whether Imam is leading you, whether you are praying at your home or alone as a Muslim, or your working place, when you say, Allahu Akbar, that's the first chapter you recite. Every Muslim knows it because they make us learn at the age of seven, of eight. When you say, Allahu Akbar, what do we say? We say, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahmanirrahim, Malik Yawmiddin, Iyaka Nabur, Iyaka Nasaim, Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustakim, Sirat Al-Lazina Amtalehim, Ghairi Al-Madu Malay Waladalim. Then we say, Ameen. Then Iyaka Nabur, Iyaka Nasaim. Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustakim. Muslims, pause for a moment. Ask yourself, why did we say, Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustakim? Quran chapter 1 verse 4. Why? It means, so of the straight way. Muhammad asked Allah, show me the straight way. That means, why did we keep repeating this? Jesus asked me. If truly the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, knows the way, why did he keep asking Allah, show me the straight way? This particular verse, Christ, the one verse, was repeated 27 times a day, within the five day prayer. It didn't start a second. Show me the straight way. Show me the straight way. It means he don't know the way. Now I saw the man. He told me I am the way. The truth and the life. No man comes to the Father, except by me. I believe it. The kind of peace I'm having, my Muslim brothers, I have never felt it since I was born. It's like somebody put a chill water within my heart. It's like my body not taking away. I, I feel peace. I don't know. It's like they give me the whole world. In fact, I, I, I see myself bigger than even this man, the president of America, Trump. I see myself bigger than Trump. I, excuse me. When you put Trump inside the room, Trump can't come out without a key. But me, Muslim brothers, I come out today without a key. I want to tell you how it happened. I was locked. This morning, when my father loved me, was angry. Jesus said, and he sacked the doctor. Because the doctor tells him, maybe uh, he knows that we are Sunni Muslim, we don't read the Bible, but everything I'm saying, the doctor tells my father, Dr. Joseph, that he's a Catholic. And the things I'm saying, they are Bible. So my father said, that, Dr. Joseph, you better stop, don't make me angry. You are a doctor. If I may ask you, how do you become a medical doctor, Dr. Joseph? 
do you just sleep overnight and wake up and begin to know all the, uh, the doctrine inside your head? Or you went to medical school? The doctor tell my father, oh, Imam, I went to medical school. But Imam Ibrahim, the things of the spirit is not like the physical. And my father, my friend, forget that nonsense. My son, we are Sunni. We don't touch Bible. We don't read Bible. So how do you mean my son is saying the mysteries of the Bible? The doctor tell him, oh, Imam, I am a Christian and a Catholic for that matter. I am, your son, everything is saying is Bible. My father, you know what? Just leave my house. He was angry, he sacked the dog and locked me inside the room. And tell the gate man, let's not let me pass. I was worried. I started losing faith in spite of all what happened. My prayer, I'm saying this for my Muslim brothers to understand. My prayer is that the Lord Jesus who appeared to me, he himself will continue appearing to my brothers and sisters. I discovered that that will be the best way for them to remain. A pastor preached to them or somebody, if care is not taken, even if they come out, they will start having doubt or maybe they may return back. Why? Because of maybe the persecution or the difficulties. But if Jesus himself appeared to them, nothing will change you, my brother. It's the powerful thing. So I was worried. I started doubting already. Why am I saying this? Because with all this I see, me myself, I started doubting when I was locked. When my father slapped me and locked me. I started doubting. I started losing faith. But then all of a sudden, that voice told me that, my son, don't doubt. Don't think like that. I was amazed. What I was thinking in my heart was that if my father come, I will tell him to forgive me. My father is right. This is not God. It's demon. So what I was even thinking, this voice know that. He tell me that, my son, don't think like that. I am the Holy Spirit. Don't call me the voice from today. I am the Holy Spirit. I am the third person of the Trinity, revealed to the Christendom. And I said, but the person who appeared to me on Monday, about 3.45 a.m., say is Jesus. He came in a very powerful light. And then the voice was big, powerful. It's like when you're around the riverside, the sea. It's coming like how the waters used to come. And that's what I'm hearing. And why you all make small, still voice? And why are you saying you are the Holy Spirit? You say, yes. Indeed, Jesus visited us on his glory on Friday. Sorry, on Monday, about 3.45. But right now, Jesus is on the right hand of the Father, interceding for the believers. I am the Holy Spirit. I'm the third person of the God here. Don't be afraid. Don't think like that. From today, if there is anything to think of my son as a child of God, think what is pure. Think what is holy. Think what is righteous. And think what is faithful. Because against such my son, there is no law. As man thinketh in his heart, my son, so is see. Don't think negative. It's not part of my kingdom. Fear is not part of my kingdom. Doubt is not part of my kingdom. It's of the Satan. Don't doubt. I have created the whole world. The whole world is my creation. But only the Christendom are my creation. I say, ah, how do you mean? So you mean Muslims are not part of it? He say, yes. The Christendom are my royal priests. A peculiar people and a holy nation. I have created them to reign in life as kings. But still, they are having a problem, some of them. Many of them are also not reigning. They believe me, but they see my Bible as a storybook. Some see it as a novel. Some even think that uh, the miracles that are inside, uh, when I was on the earth now, when Jesus was on the earth, they don't exist again. They don't know my word is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. They don't know that. So I, they, they are full of fear and doubt. Those kind of Christians, my son, I don't want you to become like them. I call them lukewarm Christians. And I say, ah, what is lukewarm Christian? I don't understand the Holy Spirit. He said, yes, they believe me today, the next five minutes they doubt. So that is why they are not really getting what they are getting. Because the Christians, my son, are my royal priest. Whatever they decree on the earth will be decreed on the heaven. What they lose on the earth will be lose in heaven. Why is it not happening that way? Because they are doubting. They worship me, some of them, with their lips. But their heart is far away from me. It's not there. That is why, my son. From today, believe. Don't be like that. Only believe, my son. They that believe out of their belly, my son, shall come out of rivers of living water. Don't ever doubt. Now hold the door. And I say, oh, but the door is locked. You say, hold it. I have key for all the doors. If I shut it, no man opens it. And if I open it, no man shut it. When I hold the door, it's like somebody put a key in the room. The door was open. I, I'm going mad, my Muslim brother. I cannot believe this. But I was afraid because the security man was at the door. He said, no, he cannot see. I said, oh, the man will see me now. He's there. He has eyes and ear. Then the Holy Spirit said, no, my son. It's high time for you to believe my word. Like high time for you to honor my word. Walk through. He will, see, he will not see you. I said, oh, the man will see me now. He said, no, my son. They have eyes, but they cannot see. They have ear, but they cannot hear. The God of this world has blinded their eyes. Let the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, to shine unto them. They cannot see you walk through the door. And I walk through the door. Nobody say a word. I cannot believe this. Then he said, I have to charter a taxi and go to a place called Agege, Capitol Road. I said, oh, I don't know anybody in Agege in the first place, not to talk of Capitol Road. He said, I have to just uh, charter a taxi. The taxi driver will not there. When I get there at the Capitol Road, I should ask for a, a company. There's a company there, it's called Habib Yogurt. I said, ah, I don't understand. Are you sending me to a Muslim? I'm so many of my Muslim brothers must know this place. Habib Yogurt. I'm doing this for the whole world. You can go and verify. 
I said, oh, but I don't know Habib Yogurt. He said, yes, Habib is a Muslim, my son. You are right. But it's called, they named the yogurt after his name because he becomes so popular in that business. It's a distributor of yogurt. He has a company there in that place. Most people in Agege know him. Just at the capital. Anybody ask, they will show you there. Go there. When you get there, tell him he's my son. His name is Habibi. Go there, my son. Tell him that people have been preaching to him concerning me for some time. His friends, his neighbors. But he's rejecting it. He wants, unless I heal him, before he can believe them. He said that if what they are saying is true, then Jesus will heal him from that disease. Go there and tell him that he don't know you and you are a Muslim like him. He will believe you. Give him all the verses of the Quran, I saw you. And after that, tell him that he should confess me as his Lord and personal Savior. Lead him to me, just like Pastor leads you to me. And by doing so, tell him that he will be healed. I said, is this a joke? He said, no. And I said, okay, no problem. I went there. Uh, he wasn't around. I met the people that work in the, in the company, many people. They say, I should wait. They have no problem because I'm Muslim. I have to wait. They call him. He say, ah, he don't know me. But they say, I say, I have a serious message for him concerning his sickness. So when they mentioned the sickness to him, he became amazed. He said, ah, how did this person know I'm sick? Anyway, he's interested. He's coming. I have to wait. But later, uh, he said he couldn't make it. But his wife will come and meet me. Then Hadja come and meet me. Hadja Khadija. When he come, he sit down. I saw everything to her. She was amazed. And Jesus told me that uh, his word has no barrier. It passes nations and cities. I shouldn't worry. I should just tell the wife uh, to confess Jesus as her Lord and personal Savior. She was amazed. And she confessed Jesus as her Lord and personal Savior. And he said that he should call the husband. And he called the husband on the phone. And he also confessed Jesus as his Lord and personal Savior. They said I should not go. I should stay there. Uh, because when immediately he confessed Jesus as his Lord and personal Savior. Instant, he said that he's going through a pain. His legs swallow. And it become walking difficult. So it's like car carry him all the way to the door before he enter his room. Car also come and pick him right there at the office. So instantly he said that immediately he said that he called us back five minutes. The swollenness all disappear. He seen instant. So he said I should stay at his house. He's going to feed me, clothe me, shelter me. He's going to do anything. He's a billionaire. And immediately he said that all of a sudden Jesus tells me, as we tell him, did he think the gift of God can be bought with his money? As we tell him that the gift of God cannot be bought with money. It's priceless. As you tell him that he, his motive for that one is not pure. He surprised the power in me. He wants to use me. He's so happy to do things. As you tell him, no, that is not the glory of God. It's not for soul. The work of God is not for soul. It's to save souls from the darkness of Islam to the light of the gospel. That's the purpose I am called. And to become a confirmer for the Christendom. For them to know what they have is more than diamond. What they have is more than anything in this world. So this is Hollywood. All their two hands are roll with it without looking back. That's my purpose of calling. And then he bring me to a servant who will train me. And I said, oh, I don't know that you're a servant. Uh, I met him only yesterday when he directed me there. So he cannot be my person who can train me. He said, oh, his servant is my father. I said, no, my father is the imam. His servant cannot be my father. He said, no, I should listen to him. In his kingdom, there are many instructors and many teachers, but not many fathers. His servant is my spiritual father. I should listen to him. The time has come. His servant will use me because he's about to change that church. He's about to put thousands of souls in that church. The place even becomes small. They have to buy another new branch. He is going to open the financial doors for his servant. Even though his servant is not telling anybody, but his servant is going through financial difficulties right now. But as we tell his servant, I mean, two weeks from today, the disappointment, the failure, and the limitation are over. Because he has answered the prayer of his servant since the 31st Passover of last year. But as we tell his servant, he the Lord walk with time. And at the fullness of time, he make all things beautiful in his own time. As we tell his servant, this is the appointed time. Two weeks from now on, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former in the life of his servant. As we tell his servant to arise and shine, because his light has come, and his glory is risen upon him. As we tell his servant, the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit are in his life. So I became confused at that place. I asked him, ah, I'm getting confused, Holy Spirit. Because he told me that he's three personality. God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So when he come back nine, I became confused. I don't understand. I said, ah. But he told me you are three. He said, no, my son. I, uh, Christians will not understand me, but you Muslims will understand. We are very inquisitive. We want to find out everything. So I say, ah, it's three now, but I become nine. He said, no, my son. I don't teach you that part yet. We are nine. Don't worry. I am nine manifested. That complete me, the Holy Spirit. All is inside my servant. But some of them are not manifesting. Now tell my servant, his prayer has been heard. 
it is appointed unto him two weeks from today, he will see the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit into real manifestation. Tell my servant, as he is ministering, I will cause the sick to be healed. The blind eye will open, and the deaf will hear. Instant miracles shall take place. As I back the words of the disciple in the past, so I will back his word with signs and wonders. Tell my son the time has come. Tell him only to prepare the ground of his heart. Tell him that that woman is his woman. That wife is his wife. Tell him that relationship or marriage sometimes is like the teeth and the tongue. And so many of the Muslims be asking, ah, uh, sorry, the Christians, how is he able to memorize all these things? Well, my Christian brothers, you can find out from the Muslims, we are not like you people. From childhood, we have been beat to memorize the entire Quran. So we have the ability to memorize things. But not only that, I think Jesus is not doing his own thing. How I can explain to you what is happening to me is like, when a man takes a black ink or a black biro, the ink, and then pour it on the white cloth, the way it sticks, everything I hear, that's how you keep bringing it. I can't forget a thing of it. But I understand what, something strange happened. When the voice told me to tell this to his servant, he told me now, I should open my mouth right in front of the Muslim brother. I said, I don't, sorry, the Muslim woman. I said, I don't understand. He said, I should open my mouth wide. When I opened my mouth, I saw a hand. Uh, that is why I want to talk to his servant. At all costs, I have to call his boy. That I know I need to talk to Pastor. Am I no, is it demon, as my father said? Am I no man? I never see such a hand. It's sparkling like a diamond, but sent like a flame of fire. Then he stretched forth that hand. I saw the hand touch my mouth. The person told me that I have put my words in your spirit and my spirit in your mouth. From today, I've given you power over the powers of Islam, my son, and not that by any means hurt you. I've given you power to uproot and to plant and to destroy. You are my choosing prophet. I tell you, I cannot be a prophet. The Quran says Muhammad is the last prophet. Quran chapter 8 verse 2 says Muhammad is the last prophet. He says forget that my son. Muhammad is not the last prophet. That is a lie. I am the Holy Spirit. I still choose prophets, teachers, pastors, apostles, evangelists, prophets for the perfecting of the body of Christ. Don't be afraid my son. The hour has come and the time. My body, the Christendom are my choosing people. But they become too cold. They are weak for me recently. I want to bring revival to the world again. I want to show them the time has come. Very soon the rapture will take place. Don't be afraid. I say, ah, what is rapture? He said, don't worry, my son. Your spiritual father will tell you what is rapture. That is why I choose him as a father over you. You are only hearing my voice. But my servant knows my way. He will tell you things. Don't be afraid. I mean, so he said I should leave the pastor's house. They were not happy. But I said, well, I have to leave. But Jesus said that no problem. When the time has come, you bring me back. So he said, oh, I should call it his number. Jesus said, no, I shouldn't call it his number. I said, ah, why? He said that because your work with them is finished. I will tell you when you connect to them again. When you collect their number, your father will definitely pursue you and he will pursue them. He will find you. Don't do that, my son. Just go. Go to my servant. The time has come. I mean, this is why I want my brothers in Islam to understand that no matter how righteous you are, you should know I'm a Sunni. And all of you know the meaning of the Sunni. No matter how holy you are, all of my family, my household, my in-laws, everybody knows me. The woman I'm betrothed, not married yet, but they all know me. I live a holy life. She used to ask me, if you are listening to me, Mariama, ah, tell me the truth. Mamadou, are you all right? Uh, are you a gay? Or are you, your thing, is it working? I told you my thing is working. I'm just waiting for the right time. Why? Because Allah said in Quran chapter 12, verse 15, that's a karabuna illa zina. Don't even come closer to that thing. Allah said, indeed, it's a dirty thing. It's the worst sin. And Allah continue that on the people on the day of the Kiyama, when he judged people on the day of judgment, people in Jahannama, the hellfire, Quran said that armed robbers are there, four one are there, thieves are there, uh, all kinds of evil are there. When God punishes them, they're in the hellfire. But the Quran said that all those kind of criminals, armed robbers, thief, four one nine, murderer, ritual killers, they will be begging Allah to take away the fornicators outside. Could you imagine? So it's a serious thing, which means Quran said that some water is coming out of their private parts which used to follow the whole environment of the hell. It's so smelling, Quran said that, to the point they are begging Allah to take them outside. They are all criminals. Like criminals in the uh, Grigri are begging the officers, take this other part of criminal outside, deliver them. <laughs> because of the seriousness of fornication. <laughs> so I used to tell her that I cannot afford to do that. So my Muslim brothers, uh, you can see that only Jesus is the cure. Our peace, which have never found Islam. We say Islam is peace, but we never found peace. But now I'm having peace. I thank Jesus Christ who have delivered me, and I thank Jesus told me that the time has come and the hour. He said that I should let my Muslim brothers know, based on Quran chapter 15, and Quran chapter 14, and Quran chapter 8, and even Quran chapter 3, all these four chapters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in verse 16 of each of them, 
وجهادوا في سبيل الله واولادكم وانفسكم لا يترون ان الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات ولكن اهل الكتاب يا بني اسرائيل ان الذين يترون المسلمين ما على الله يسرا وكل وصلوا يوم القيامه وانتم جنات الفردوس وجنات النعيم that all who believe among the muslim men and the muslim women surely the people of israel have not differed from the truth until the clear proof has come to them that they have changed the books that have sent to them which is the injil the good news and the torah which is the torah therefore allah said that wherever you find them pursue them kill them for surely allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you 70000 pavejos bajin in aljanna in heaven and even if you die in the course of the process which is the muslim holy war allah say you will surely be in heaven and when i tell this to his servant his servant told me oh god is too much i have been praying some time ago i told god is going to deliver us the governor of kaduna I don't want to mention the name for security purposes. He knows me very well. I don't have a problem with him. But this, what his servant told me, that he had been praying, and God saw me a vision praying for that man, and that means it's amazing. And Jesus also confirmed to me that uh, the prayer of the Christians is that is the reason why he appeared to me, not because of my prayers or my fasting or my righteousness. It's the prayer of the Christians. Only their prayer is what is answered. No prayer is answered. Jesus said, unless it is said in the name of Jesus with a sincere heart. my muslim brothers why do we kill human beings imagine god who created human being now will command us to kill human being again and in that process we go to heaven this is develop every hatred for every heart of muslim to hate the christians no matter how they pretend to love with them or chat with them but in their heart they don't still love them i beg of you in the name of jesus my muslim brothers and sisters i want the salvation of your soul i know all of you desire you fast for 30 good days every day that is good day you wake up 3 o'clock to eat something and continue like that till the following evening 7 o'clock and break following day again the same thing all this effort i am sorry to say this you will be disappointed on the day of judgment if you don't have jesus christ all this thing will be in vain i pray to my father jesus christ to save both of you and to deliver you from darkness